The current monetary system came into being or was formally established when the Second World War was coming to an end in the Bretton Woods Conference in upstate New York. And uh, to put over this position in a nutshell, because we don't have enough time, a monetary system came into being in which only one currency had any semblance of being, uh, um, having integrity. The US dollar was redeemable in gold at the rate of $35 an ounce, but only governments could redeem. But the market is using it. And so this is uh, something remarkably bogus. This, this um, semblance of integrity, which was there with the US dollar, was not there with any other currency in the world. All other paper money, all, had their value in relation to their link with the US dollar. Good. And then this disappeared. When one man stood up in the French National Assembly with admirable courage and integrity, General Charles de Gaulle, no, no voice from the world of Islam, no voice from the world of Christianity, no voice from the world of Judaism, the scholars. But from France, General Charles de Gaulle denounced the monetary system as unjust. And they never forgave him for that. They got him out. But France then continued to redeem the others until 1971. And then the United States decided we can no longer honor this obligation under international law to redeem dollars for gold. And then came the United States in no man's land, the United States dollar. And from 1971 to 1973, there was a precarious um, vulnerability for the whole monetary system because the United States dollar is in no man's land. And then they, they orchestrated the 1973 Arab Israeli war, and they were on both sides of the war because the Soviet Union was with them. And that war, it was that war which brought into being the petrodollar. And now oil is used as gold. Our Prophet Muhammad, Allah's blessings be upon him, prophesied about the end time. And Muslims know about this. He said that the river Euphrates will uncover a mountain of gold. This is the Prophet speaking in symbolic language. Only a true prophet could speak like that. He said that the river Euphrates will uncover a mountain of gold. People will fight for the gold. And 99 out of every 100 who fight for that gold will be killed. But the believers in the one God must not touch that gold. There is one methodology of the Salafi which produced Daesh that uh, we cannot but understand this as the, other than literally. And so they're waiting for a mountain of the metal to come out from underneath the river. And we say, well, find a comfortable sofa. You've got a long way ahead of you. We understand it differently. We interpret the religious symbolism. And we say that this prophecy was fulfilled in 1974, when the United States succeeded in making a deal with Saudi Arabia that oil will be sold for only US dollars. Even if you have gold, you cannot buy 
oil. You've got to change your gold into U.S. dollars, and then you can buy the oil. And that's when the U.S. dollar became a petrodollar. And while we, we are living in the age of a petrodollar monetary system, with the gold, you had to be careful that if you don't have enough paper to, to match the gold, the bank can bust. But that's what happened in the Vietnam War. They were printing more paper than they had gold, and that Charles de Gaulle saw that. But now with the petrodollar monetary system, the sky is the limit. You can print as much as you want. But they've gone beyond that because printing costs paper, money. You, you need to buy the paper, you need to buy the ink, you need to have the machines, you need to have the security vans, you need the guards. There's an easier way to do it. Instead of having money made from paper, you have invisible money, intangible money, digital money, electronic money. And all you have to do is Obama signs a, a, a check, sends it to the Federal Reserve, and the Federal Reserve then signs a check and sends $7 trillion to the different banks. And there you are. You made so much more money now out of thin air. And when President Morsi of Egypt, who says he is a Muslim, Ikhwan al-Muslim, is a great Muslim movement with great intellectuals in them, and he now goes to the IMF to borrow $4 billion, as he did. When a contract is signed with the IMF, only then does that become money because you now have a legal obligation to repay $4 billion. And so there are people who have succeeded in a manner which is unbelievable in producing money out of thin air and expanding and expanding and expanding in a mysterious way that make the banking system richer and richer and richer. But the plea that we cannot allow the banking system to fall, this bank is too big to fall, that lie, monstrous lie is uttered from the White House, so we gotta help them. So you send more trillions of dollars to the banking system. This is a monetary system which has come from the Antichrist. And if you are a Christian and you cannot understand that, you got homework to do. I ask the Christian, who is my brother? Because we are the only two people on the face of the earth who believe that Jesus will return. Nobody else believes that. Only the Muslim and the Christian. So I ask the Christian, when Jesus comes back, will he use USD or will he use Euros? Have you asked yourself that question? And you're a Christian? Huh? Or will he use Pakistani rupees or Bangladeshi taka? Huh? If you have more than peanuts in your head, you will know that Jesus will not touch this bogus money. And that Jesus will only use gold and silver coins as money that the Lord God produced. You think Islamic banking will use gold and silver coins? Oh, come on. Islamic banking will never use gold and silver coins. No. Because Islamic banking was created by them to further validate their, their monetary system because Islamic banking is comfortable with paper money. And Islamic banking will be even more comfortable tomorrow when there is no more paper money and they welcome the new cashless world of invisible money, electronic money, digital money. This is my first response to this, sort, this, this curious creature called 
Islamic banking. Don't come to me and tell me, well, the Islamic banking is trying to re re remove money being lent on interest and all that garbage, because they're not doing that. What Islamic banking is doing is lending money on interest, but doing it from the back door. The commercial banks are doing it from the front door. So the commercial banks have more integrity than you doing it from the back door. I don't have the time to explain all these things. But this is our response to this bogus monetary system. And we look forward to the day when the Christian world and the Jewish world and the Muslim world will wake up from their brainwashing and recognize when Jesus comes back He's going to be using gold and silver coins. We call them dinar and dirham. If that is going to happen when, this, when Jesus returns, the Son of Mary comes back, what are we waiting for? Why is our, why our, our voice is not raised? Why don't we come together in a common struggle to restore gold and silver as money in the market?